Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. What an opportunity, what a blessing to have this beautiful day that the Lord has made. We're going to be glad in it. We are so blessed, brothers and sisters, to have God as our Father. And to get to know Him is so, so important. You know, it doesn't matter whether something is there or not. You know, as long as you're not aware of what is, uh, the, the awareness is the key. That's what I want to say. The awareness is key. The consciousness you have is important. We need to wake up to the truth, to the reality that is already there. If we don't wake up to the reality that is already there, it doesn't uh, work in our lives. It means nothing in our lives. But once we pick it, once we get it, we, we are blessed. So thank you. Lord, for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, wonderful message you have uh, given us. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that everything will work together for your good. Everything, everything, because of the secrets of the message. Your mouth and your heart are very, very important. Get to know how to use them and you will be you take advantage of the blessings that they bring. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, indeed, brothers and sisters, we are learning something very important. In verse uh, 8 of chapter 10 of the book of Romans, we read, But what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. So the word is near you and is in your mouth and in thy heart, and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So Paul says that the message we preach, one, is not complicated. We're not telling you to travel towards somewhere, to do some pilgrimage, and uh, try and get something somewhere specific. But what Jesus did was universal. And wherever you were, you have access to it. It is a matter of revelation. And that is why it is called illumination. The importance of the sharing of the message will never be overemphasized. The message should be preached first because it is in the very chapter whereby it talks about how can they believe unless somebody has preached who will reach to that. But as we are talking up, talking here, we are discovering that the gospel has the word, the work that Jesus had to do has already done it. And guess what? He has done it for all of us. But something is very, very important for the experience of what Jesus Christ has done. It takes the consciousness of acknowledgement. Why is it that it takes acknowledgement? It's because if somebody does not acknowledge it you are not left neutral you are actually acknowledging something else if you are not here you are there you see this is the the mystery of it you, there is no neutrality here you are either on the left side or on the right side most times even when you are not aware of what you are aware of most times you realize you are focused or you are filled with something which is controlling your life. So, the message is important to be preached. It's important to preach this message and the consciousness of, of every man to be awakened to this truth or reality. When something has happened, some, we need to know what happened and then acknowledge it. And that's what we call believing or faith and so on and so forth so the bible then teaches us paul teaches us that the word is not far from you but there is a duo here the mentality and your word and your mouth so you do not need you don't need to ascend into heaven to bring christ down to earth to experience the full effects of your salvation nor do you need to descend into the realms of the dead to search for him as though he had not already been raised up to newness of life. This is what we are seeing in this verse. So it's not in heaven nor under the earth. 
it's right here where we are. But what do you, what you must do is connect your mouth and mentality to the word of faith. So it's called the word of faith, which Paul proclaimed. See, Paul said, the word we preach, the word we preach. In other words, what he proclaimed. So he is revealing the mouth and the mentality of the believer as the vital connectors to the experience of salvation and the manifestation of Christ to man. Are you hearing this? It's important to know that the mouth and the mentality goes hand in hand and these are vital connectors to the experience of salvation and the manifestation of Christ to man. So in other words, you want experiences, you want to see experiences in your life, there are two combinations, are two things that should combine together. We talked about them in the previous teaching. We are emphasizing on this again, that your mentality and your mouth is key. See, most times we blame God, we blame men, we blame circumstances, we blame what happened, we blame things. We don't know up to now the power of our mentality and also combine with our mouth. Remember the mentality controls your personality and your mouth controls what you see on the other side. And guess what? What fills your mentality, it will be eventually what you speak forth. Even when you speak forth something which is not in your heart, it won't work. We'll see that. But he's saying that once now your mentality is, is uh, aware, you are aware of what happened that Jesus Christ did for us, something will happen to you. We need to be aware, acknowledge, aware and acknowledge what Christ Jesus has done for us. What did he do for us? What did he do for us? What did he do for us? Once you know that, once you know how he took the old man, he crucified him, once you know the newness of life which has brought forth after his resurrection, once you know that the righteousness of God is here and now present with us, once you know that there's nothing you need to do to bring Jesus, or need to go, you know you don't need to go anywhere to bring him here. Once you know that salvation is available now, see your heart is a very important component in terms of your experiences here and now. So, brothers and sisters, this is what he's talking about. This is what he's talking about. And by the way, this is exactly what he says in the, in, the, in the following verse. It is in the same flow. Because in verse 9, he says, Romans 10, 9, he says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. You see, he says, now if you use that mouth of yours to confess the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart, See, he's also, he's still bringing in the heart and the mouth. Shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. There are certain things you should believe. There are things that you're supposed to believe. Thou shalt be saved. So, one, he's talking about when it, first and foremost, he is a, it's a principle, it's a secret. You know, heart and mouth, this combination produces salvation. And I will explain more about this and this is not only in uh, in salvation as in being born again or accepting what jesus did for you but this is also the same thing that is happening to human beings what they believe in their heart in other words and what they confess on their mouth is their daily experiences they are experiencing exactly what is in their heart and what's what they are using their mouth to 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 to, to speak forth but the most important thing is to understand even how it works. Because the next verse, of course, verse 10 will explain it further. But as we are here, we are seeing that when you want to know what salvation is, to, in, in, in fact, if you want to be saved, how are you supposed to be saved? How can you be saved? Being saved is not a man's invention. 
or your own creation. Being saved is not your initiation or your works that you're doing. Remember, Jesus Christ saved you without you knowing. Or oh, he did take you on the cross with him. Therefore, the work of salvation has been complete. And now, you have been joined with the Lord and you didn't know that. You didn't know that. And as long as you don't know what Christ did for you, you will never experience anything. You see? Now, what is salvation? Is the Salvation is that experience of what Christ did, the result of the work of Jesus Christ, taking you with him on the cross, dying with you, going to hell and rising back from the dead, that, so, and coming back to the newness of life. That newness of life is the experience of salvation. But salvation on your side or your experience of this salvation will depend on your acknowledgement on whether you know it or not. You will never experience this beautiful, this beautiful salvation until you acknowledge, until you get to know what really happened. This is exactly what happens even in other, in other spheres of life. You cannot be, you cannot practice uh, medicine as a medicine do a doctor. You cannot become a doctor unless you've been trained to be one. You cannot be uh, a teacher unless you have uh, been taught to be one. In other words, whatever you practice today, you have you you have some information you have knowledge in that particular area and therefore you can deliver so the same applies to this you have to have this knowledge this information this understanding once you have that knowledge and it gets into your heart something will happen to you you will be able to experience something when you get to know it you see so salvation here it's not what we're trying to do. It's not what we are trying to, to initiate. It is what happened on the cross. It's what happened in resurrection. It's what happened in the incarnation. The whole work, person, and the work of Jesus Christ that is explained to us, that we get to know. And once that is known, we experience the results, the benefits, the implication of that very person and the work of Jesus Christ. So acknowledgement, acknowledging him, acknowledging the person and the work of Jesus Christ is key for your experience of salvation. So there is nobody that is saved unless he's acknowledged. He acknowledged. And I'm talking about experiencing salvation, experiencing salvation. When you talk about being saved, all of us have been saved, but not all of us have been ex are experiencing salvation. What do I mean all of us have been saved? All of us, Christ died for all of us, you know. Christ came to save all of us. But is everybody experiencing this? No. That is why the acknowledgement, the knowing, the knowledge, the heart should know something about what happened. And then your mouth will agree with it. The idea is not even uh, necessarily the mouth. It's the idea of agree, agree with God, to accept what God has already done, to say yes to what has already done. And that is the experience of salvation. So salvation is not complicated. You get to know what happened. And that itself has power. And once your heart gets it and you agree with it, you experience what it produces. Shalom, shalom.